In this video, you will learn about the Fusion 360 platform, how to access Fusion 360, how to navigate Fusion 360's user interface, and understand the main components of the Fusion 360 functionality. So what is Fusion 360? So think of Fusion 360 as an end-to-end -end product development platform. So Fusion 360, it's not just CAD, design, CAM, simulation, documentation, rendering, electronics, or generative design. It's all of these things. And it's cloud-based, meaning that the files are saved in the cloud. You have three ways to run Fusion 360. You can install it on a Windows or Mac computer, and you can also run Fusion 360 via a web browser, which is perfect for running Fusion 360 on a Chromebook or an underpowered computer. To run Fusion 360 via browser, just go to fusion.online.autodesk.com and log in with your Autodesk education credentials. And before that, make sure that you do have a Fusion 360 license. With Fusion 360, you can also see how your students are progressing with their projects. You can view, add comments, add red lines to, to their designs via a web browser or mobile app that is available on the Apple or Google Play Store. So here we're inside of Fusion. You can see that the user interface is clean and simple. And how we're able to do that is we're only going to expose the tools that you need for the given operation that you're in. Now let's look at the data. So if I want to see my data, I'm just going to expand the data panel. So think of this as the Windows Explorer, except here our files are saved in the cloud. So here inside of the data panel, this is where I can create specific projects. So of course I already have my transitioning to Fusion project. Now as your students are gonna start working on group projects, all you simply need to do is go under the People tab, enter the email address that they are logging into Fusion with and they'll get an invitation and then they'll be able to see this data. Now also inside of the data panel, here under the bracket assembly, you'll notice it says V23. So every time you save a file inside of Fusion, you get a version. Now, the great part is if you look at this, you know, from the educator lens, here I can see when I started working on this file, every time that I saved it. And of course, you can see who saved it. So in this case, I created all of these. So on a group project, you'll be able to see you know, who's doing what, and you'll be able to monitor the progress of your students. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up this bracket assembly. So as soon as I open up the file, here you'll see the letter D appeared. So that is basically telling anyone in this project that I have this file open. And as soon as I would start editing that, we'll let everybody know that as well. So now I'm also going to open up this T-spline file. So I'm going to close the data panel. One of the things that I'm always asked is, you know, where's a good place to start with modeling with my students? Well, one easy place to do is working with forms. Inside of Fusion, we refer to these as T-splines. So you would simply come up here and go into the form environment. And of course, I've already done that. And basically what I did here is I created a simple box and I started pulling out these faces. So very quickly here, let me just grab a few of these faces and show you how easy this is. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start pulling those faces and maybe here I'll add a couple additional ones. Now I can just maybe select that one and just pull that out. So you can see very quick, very simple. I can just grab these faces and make some pretty interesting changes to this model. So now go ahead, click OK. Now when I'm done with this, finish the form, this is a solid. So what I can do now is I can send this off to a 3D printer. And then of course the nice part is your students will be able to touch it. So next I'm gonna close the file. So now on the bracket assembly, one thing that I wanna point out that's gonna be different from other CAD systems here is inside of Fusion, we have our timeline. So this is where the features are gonna be. So again, from a student perspective, I don't have to dig through a browser to find my features. So for example, if I make this bracket, active, I'm only seeing the feature tree basically for that bracket. So let's go to the top level here. 
The other thing that I want to point out, so in the previous slides, I mentioned the collaboration tools where you can add comments. So here at the lower left-hand corner, if you expand this, these are comments that I previously added from the mobile app. So if I double click on that, you can see the markup that I did with the text. Now you can also add comments here right inside of Fusion and you can start a thread. So you can go back and reply to a previous comment. Next, let's explore some of those workspaces that I mentioned previously. So I'm gonna skip over the generative design workspace for a few seconds here, and let's start with render. So of course, this is where you're gonna be able to do rendering. So inside of Fusion, we have 3D environment backgrounds. So you can get everything set, and then you can render this. Doing renderings is very computer intense. So here I can simply say, I don't wanna render this local, but I wanna render this up to the cloud. And then you just go ahead and click on render, it'll be sent up to the cloud. And then of course you can continue working in Fusion, you can close Fusion, and then when that rendering is done, it'll appear here in the gallery. So here is a previous rendering that I sent up to the cloud. So of course at this point, if I'd like, I can download this and use this as an image somewhere. Now in the animation workspace, this is where you can go back and create exploded views. So let me play the animation. And of course these animations show how the assembly will be disassembled or assembled. And you can also use these to create drawing views. So next let's take a look at the simulation workspace. So in the simulation workspace, of course, this is where you can run a simulation or do an FEA study on your model. And again, we have a bunch of different studies types that you can do. Of course, the most common would be a static stress. So after your study is set up, all you need to do is solve this. And just like the rendering, we can solve this locally or again, send it up to the cloud. So I already solved this study. So here you can see the results just like you would expect. So again, if you have previous knowledge doing simulations, those will apply directly into Fusion. And then the next workspace is Manufacture. So under the Manufacture workspace, you know, based on the different types of machines that you have, you can do different setups. So here inside of Fusion, if you wanna set something up for a milling machine or a turning or cutting, that would be like a laser cutter or additive 3D printer. So for the example that I have here, I already set this up for additive. So of course in the design workspace, if I needed to save this off as an STL file, I could simply do that. So in the manufacturing workspace, you get more options. So for example, I can control the infill, I can control the supports. So next I'm just going to simulate the results. And let me go ahead and play this, zoom up here. So you can see that the simulation is showing what's happening one layer at a time. Now I'm just gonna speed this up so you can see what the infills are gonna look like. And those cyan areas, those are the supports. Now going back to our workspaces, the bottom one here, of course, is where you would create drawings, super easy inside of Fusion. And then the last one I wanna talk about here is generative design. Generative design is all about design exploration. So what we do is we fully define the problem up front from the geometry that needs to be preserved, which areas should be kept out. And again, we also add our different load cases. We define the different manufacturing methods that could, could potentially be used, different materials. And then again, we send this up to the cloud to get run. So then we explore the outcomes. So as you can see on the screen here, I have many different designs that were created up in the cloud for me. So now on the left-hand side, this is where you can start to hone in on showing you specifically, you know, what would the results look like if this was created with an additive operation or a three axis milling or five or die cast. So let's go back to a three axes. So for example, if I want to dive deeper on one of these, just double click on it. Of course you can rotate the model see what it looks like. On the right hand side, we can see all the properties for this model. Down at the bottom, we show you all the iterations that Generative went through to create this model. And of course, as you go further to the right, the mass is being reduced. Then of course, the last step here is you would export this model and you could use that as your design.
This wraps up the introduction to Fusion 360 module. In the following modules, we'll dive deeper into many of these topics. Thanks for watching.